Today, we're going to talk about the direct-to-consumer relationship that a lot of entertainment, media, and technology companies are jockeying towards following the transformation over the last year related to the pandemic. Over the last year, obviously, most of us have experienced staying at home or sheltering at home or self-quarantining. And so people are at home more. So the companies that have that direct relationship are the ones that are really succeeding at this point. That's not to say that this trend wasn't already in motion. The pandemic really has served as an accelerant towards people wanting to have that direct relationship with their consumers. This changes quite a bit. The way the business has worked historically is there's some subscription, but also advertising, which you pay with your attention, right? Your time and transactional in terms of you buy a ticket to a movie, you buy a ticket to a show, you buy a book, you buy an album, a CD, you download a song. What's happening now is that we're seeing these businesses, rather than trying to get your attention every time they have a new product, the idea is they'll have a sustainable cash flow for a reasonable amount of money and you'll have access to that content. So whether it's Spotify, where they'll give you access to all the music in the world for a reasonable price every month, or it will be, for instance, Warner Brothers. Rather than say, come out and see Wonder Woman 1984, they'll say, subscribe to HBO Max. We'll give you Wonder Woman 1984, as well as a bunch of other movies that you may want to see at a schedule that works for you. I still think we're in the early stages of this move to direct to consumer. However, the winners of this are going to be the companies that have scale. Just like any direct-to-consumer business, you're going to face things like churn of people getting it and then getting rid of it. So loyalty and having a long-term relationship is going to be won over the long time by having great content, reasonable price, a good interface. And that's going to be the challenge going forward. Using data and big data to serve up content that people really want. These are all the elements that are going to be important going forward as they try to be uh, the winners in this new frontier. My main advice is to listen to your own habits of how you experience and how you are using entertainment and media, what platforms you go to, why, uh, and what kind of content you're watching and why. The, um, in terms of an academic standpoint, I would say trying to get grounded in the basics of marketing, finance, uh, accounting, and then also maybe more deeply understanding uh, to some degree statistics and data analytics as you'll tr try to understand target audiences and try to retain them in the long run. Uh, I think this is a really exciting time in this space. Um, one of the great things is I think we are now all getting uh, exposed to content that we may not have been able to access as simply um, as we could in the past. So. People are watching shows from around the world, and in that, maybe there's a bit of empathy that we're understanding across the world. I do think we're in the early stages of this. We're going to start to see uh, advertising-based models, but and new companies releasing content. But this is a trend. I think it will keep going. It'll be interesting to see where we go in the next five and ten years.